Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is Tadej Rolts. Uh, I'm doing uh, art-based uh, PhD research at the University of Huddersfield. And uh, I'm doing an audiovisual uh, research uh, where I'm trying to find some meaningful links between audio and visuals, more accurately between uh, computer animation, 3D graphics, uh, 3D meshes, and uh, sounds and music on the other side. And uh, one of the many questions that uh, I want to answer during my research is how would it sound and look like if musical compositional elements could be represented as geometry and processed or synthesized like 3D objects in physically based computer animation? Okay, so this is a quite a broad question. So um, I, started, I decided to start uh, with trying out uh, how would a distortion of geometry sound like when geometry is map mapped to musical parameters rather than sonic ones? Um, so, for instance, uh, if you have a geometry um, and we, de we deform it, what I want to uh, research here is uh, how could that, that be translated into music? Uh, what musical parameters to map when when I wish to just wrinkle up uh, the music. So um, I was thinking if uh, the static grid of a conventional sequencer or DAW uh, is like a backbone of a musical piece, um, then uh, I could uh, crumple up the music uh, simply by, by mashing this grid. Um, so uh, I realized I need some kind of a sequencer with, uh, with a grid that has elastic properties or some kind of fabric-like properties. Um, so first I needed to find some common ground between a uh, conventional sequencer and uh, uh, 3D visuals. And uh, I realized I need something, uh, some simple 3D object that would uh, meaningfully represent musical time that would be easy and intuitively to control, and that could be further mapped to some more uh, complex 3D geometries. So basically, what I wanted to do is to mess up with uh, this, the new sequencer, and that would, in real time, uh, influence uh, musical structures and 3D, uh, more complex 3D geometries at the same time. Um, so yeah, I started just with a, a simple uh, line in a 3D space or rather physically based string that uh, functions as a sequencer and I call it a string venser. Now I will show, show you a short uh, demonstration of uh, string venser and uh, as you will see the initial, initial idea to uh, link audio and visuals grow, grew up into some more complex uh, uh, project uh, so the string venser became actually a musical tool that uh, offer some uh, new features. Okay, so this is like a very simple uh, didactic uh, example, just one sequence, synth and, uh, and a drum. So basically the sequence made in live was imported into Max where everything is made. And then uh, these, uh, I call them trigger objects, just trigger back the samplers and synths in Ableton. <laughs> vertical, uh, this reading position is basically an uh, infinite plane, so at any point where a uh, trigger object passes the uh, reading position, it uh, triggers sound, but it doesn't work in, in uh, the other direction. 
just in order to uh, avoid the potential mess. Okay, this is a more complex uh, example, which is actually from the piece I've, I've made with this tool. And uh, you will hear the uh, part of the piece uh, in the last section of presentation. Here the reading position is inside a sphere. So here I wanted to, to, to create some phrases which would kind of function as a random but have this natural feel which comes out of this physics simulation. Here I'm sending uh, random uh, impulses into the uh, string to just keep the thing moving. Now in next example, there's a central force field traveling along with a uh, reading position. So this is just sucking in uh, surrounding, uh, uh, surrounding uh, events, which gives us this glitchy, jittery music. And before we were in some kind of a um, free uh, musical paradigm and now we can just morph back into a metric one. Okay, wall function. This uh, represents the gravity pull towards the left side and how the strings bounce uh, depends on uh, physical parameters that are uh, set separately. Now this is the total disintegration option. Uh, now the trigger objects doesn't have any um, um, any um, forces between them. It's completely free. And again, we can morph from this totally disintegrated state back into the metric one. And this is one of the unique features of this. Uh... Okay, here we have the wrap option, which is just folding back uh, everything that goes out from the borders of the loop. Then we have normalize, which normalizes time. So we avoid uh, silences and also a uh, significant tempo increase when uh, if the uh, situation is uh, similar to that. Okay, random displacement. This is just a random offset to uh, trigger objects, either in positive or negative side. This is useful for kind of more Otecker-like bits, although here we can go into extremes uh, and restructure musical material, not just swing it. Okay, we have also the amount, so how much the trigger objects are actually following uh, the string or the random displacement. So now I set it to somewhere 50-50. Okay, this is the um, interface for this section. So now in the first part we have amount, uh, displacement amount set to zero, in the later one to 100%. And now I'm just messing around uh, for the sake of uh, demonstration. This is now just another example. Now here, here are many, many different ways how to distribute these things and some create really interesting musical results. And one of them for me is this example which gives us a regular interval where uh, this offset uh, caused by either a, st a string or random displacement is uh, at the zero. And uh, this enables us to preserve some kind of groove or pulse from initial uh, sequence, although there is, as you can see, Although the sequence is totally messed up, it still has some kind of groove, which is something I'm definitely after in my own music. Okay, here we can uh, independently from, uh, 
from, uh, from wiggling this thing around, uh, we can crossfade between different sections. So instead of going from section A into section B, we can morph uh, slowly into between sections. Um, also, we can combine this, of course, with previous features. For instance, we can go from section A into some free paradigm and totally mess things up, morph uh, into B into that, uh, in that uh, uh, free stage, and then we can uh, morph back into section B. So this enables us an, uh, non-conventional ways of moving between different sections. Okay, if I move this a bit further. Okay, here we have uh, synth, uh, synth sequence and run sequence in different layers, which gives us even uh, additional temporal shift between the layers, and we can have as much layers as we want. Uh, this is a step sequencer that just uh, assigns uh, whatever parameter values to each individual trigger object. And instead of uh, using step sequencer, we can also um, we can also um, calculate uh, physical parameters from the movement. So, for instance, speed, velocity, uh, acceleration, and use this data instead of drawing uh, them by hand. Okay, we are uh, running uh, out of time, so I. Quickly go on. Okay, so these are the uh, the the relatively, I mean, I would say, new features of this of this tool, uh, and these are morphing or crossfading between sections, uh, morphing between uh, metric and free musical paradigm, uh, swing and restructuring of musical material based on physical geometry distortion, and topological morphing and disintegration of musical time. Um, okay, here now I will show you uh, just the very last section of a piece I did with this tool. Okay, here the tool was used in three different ways. First, the initial uh, uh, rhythm was kind of a crippled to get this awkward swing uh, with this uh, deformation of the string. Uh, then the string morphed slowly into something less and less metric. 
and also at the same time there was uh, there were uh, phrases made just by swinging around the string uh, to create this kind of a random but more natural feel uh, phrases. That is all. Thank you. Tadej Rolz and String Vencer. <laughs>